Hi, and welcome to Now That's Interesting. I'm your host, Jennifer Masumba, and on this show, we interview fascinating guests in a unique and fun way. I'd like to introduce you to award-winning filmmaker, Scott Klum. Welcome, Scott. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad you're here. Um, Scott's become a good friend of mine over the past few months, and he is a storyteller, cinematographer, and editor based in Boulder, Colorado. Many of his projects are documentaries, which include his film, Autism, One Man's Journey, a film about being diagnosed as autistic late in life. And boy, do I um, identify with that. Um, we will be talking about that film today, and between this film and his short film, Autism Ability, Scott's work has been in 14 film festivals all over the globe. He also won the award for Best Editor in the 2020 Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge. That is awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so that's quite a resume. I've got to say, and we met during the Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge, or EDFC, which I might refer to it from here on out, <laughs> yeah. um, last year, and we've gotten to know each other and found that we have a lot in common. So today we thought we'd talk to you about um, late diagnosis and autism, and then we're going to take a sneak peek at Scott's new film coming out. And it's going to be a good time. So, Scott, tell us about your journey to diagnosis. So, I mean, I didn't know I was autistic till, I don't know, I was 23, almost 24 years old. Um, growing up, I was constantly misdiagnosed with learning disabilities. Yeah. Um, furthermore, I was diagnosed with central auditory processing disorder. Yep. And, um, yeah, we always thought that I just struggled with, um, background noise and conversations, but really when I look back at it now and see how now that I'm diagnosed, it's like, I struggled with communication as a whole and being able to understand social nuances and, um, as soon as I was diagnosed as autistic, um, I mean, for some it can be scary, but for me, it was a breath of fresh air because I understand both sides of like being diagnosed late in life and early because I've heard the story of people early in life being diagnosed, wishing they weren't diagnosed to later because then they had this label on them their whole life and people had judgments towards them. But from my standpoint, I would have much rather been diagnosed when I was younger because then I could have gotten the proper services, started yeah. therapy and a bunch of things when I was younger versus waiting till later in life where things got much harder. I totally agree. Like we were talking We've been through some things as adults, some treatment pl programs, and probably a lot of that wouldn't have occurred had we gotten the help we needed, because I was diagnosed late too, yep. had we gotten the help we needed. And do you think too, like it affected your self-confidence when you were a kid? I know it did for me. Oh yeah, it definitely messed with my self-confidence. I was bullied from basically elementary school through my junior year of high school yeah. and um yeah I mean I definitely struggled and I tried to fit in with people but um unfortunately like that led to um partying and things like that and it wasn't because probably wanted... didn't even want to do no like <laughs> that's the last thing an autistic person wants to do right but, yeah I mean I on April 10th I'll be 11 years sober so that's great that's yeah awesome. so enjoying that life much much more yeah I agree um I agree with that uh, completely I, I told it's so weird because our stories are so similar so if our stories are so similar there's got to be so many people out there 
with a similar story as well. So I think it's important to talk about this because I don't think people talk about late diagnosis very much and it mm -hmm. really affects people in different ways. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, and you have a new film coming out called Autism, One Man's Journey, which is a documentary and memoir about you, Scott Klum. Um, diagnosed with autism at age 23, and you take viewers on a journey wanting to bring awareness to the issues related to late diagnosis that we were talking about and not understanding what was wrong with you. Oh, I get that. Um, yeah. And it also includes a personal interview with Dr. Temple Grandin, which is amazing, one of the world's most accomplished and well-known adults with autism. When I say what's wrong with me, like, I don't, I don't think anything's wrong with me. Like, right. it's just like when I, like certainly when I was at rock bottom, I certainly just wanted to know why things were the way they were. But being autistic, it's like, there's nothing wrong with being autistic. In some ways being autistic is better than a lot of things because we're so talented at so many things. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I agree when you say what's wrong with you, but I also wanted to know what was wrong with me. I knew I was different. I knew right. I was different and I knew my future was going to be different. Like everyone was planning to get married and do all these things. And I'm like, I don't know if that really vibes with me. Like, right. so I, I understand that totally. So we're going to take a look at your trailer and see what's coming up. Cause I'm excited. Sounds good. Many autistic adults don't get their diagnosis till later in life. Scott Klum was 23 when he got his. One in 59 children are diagnosed with autism. Boys are four times more likely to be diagnosed than girls. It's been over 75 years since Donald Triplett was diagnosed with autism. He, along with many others, were institutionalized early in life. Clum, now 33, spent 10 years of his life bottoming out, despite efforts and interventions by a wide range of people, from family to professionals. Over the past 10 years, there has been a dramatic shift in attitudes and practices in the autism community, the mental health field, and the general public. Autism, One Man's Journey, is a triumphant story of perseverance and hope. Filmed and edited by Boulder-based filmmaker Scott Klum. It's a film made for autistic people by an autistic person. Actually, there's no targeted audience. It's for everyone. So Scott, that is amazing. You're an amazing cinematographer and storyteller. I've just got to tell you, coming from one filmmaker to another. Thank um, you. I see, I see what you do and I, I can't wait till we can make something together because I think we can make an awesome film together. Me too. And, um, I just wanted to remind everybody, stick around because the crowd favorite speed round is at the end. Scott doesn't know about it or the questions. So we'll see what happens there. Um, a little bit about you. You used to be a professional skier, right? I was a professional ski filmmaker. I was... Um, I always wanted to become a professional skier. And then as I was trying to go that route, I broke way too many bones. And um, so that's what actually ended up getting me into filmmaking is I couldn't handle the medical bills anymore. And I couldn't like, there's definitely injuries I regret growing up now. I broke my back and both arms at the same time. Oh my God. And um, so I ended up filming my friends instead of being filmed. And that's how I got to where I am today. And it started with ski films and went to documentaries and much more, so. Wow, so if you hadn't been a skier and gotten injured, it wouldn't have led to your true calling. So yep. it all... I think things happen for a reason in life mm -hmm. as good or bad as they may be. Um, it just, things work out one way or another. They do, especially if you keep an open and optimistic mind about things and 
you know, sometimes it's hard at first when something happens and we can't do what we love. But then if we try to rethink it, have that open mind like you did, uh, you figured out a new way and you found something you really love. So that's awesome. Yep. Um, I know you have been working with some big names in production. I don't know if you can say them, but I just said big names. Um, what can you tell us about your goals for the future? And what advice do you have for others who want to achieve their goals, especially others who have autism or may believe they have autism? Yep. Um, my main goals for the future or big goals, continue to pursue my career as a filmmaker, see where it brings me. I haven't locked into one set idea in film yet. I'm kind of keeping my doors open to see what leads I may get. But um, yeah, I, I've had, because of the Disability Film Challenge, I've made some great connections. And um, I've been making films now since, it started in 2004, so, um, and I'm just glad I kept with it um, because for a long time, being so depressed and everything um, made life hard, but filmmaking wasn't just a job for me. It was also a coping skill, like yeah. something about holding a camera, editing, whatever it may be, it just, um, does it bring you joy? Yeah. It brings a lot of joy. Like I literally cannot go a single day in my life without doing something film or photography oriented. And, um, being that I live in Boulder, Colorado, um, I've got nature right outside my doorstep. Like I'm a couple minutes away from some of the best hikes in Colorado. And, um, but yeah, I, I see myself in the future, probably moving to Los Angeles or something, um, potentially New York. It really depends on where that film career lands me. And um, yeah, I would suggest to any person on the spectrum or any autistic person to keep at it like I like I said I've been doing film since 2004 and 2020 despite a pandemic has been my breakout year (laughs) year. and um things just one thing after another keeps happening and um it's been amazing and I honestly don't know where I got my creativity because I come from a family of dentists. So um, I think this year has been awesome because in the past they didn't really, they knew I was a good filmmaker, but they didn't realize how good. And um, now that I've won three awards between my two different films this year, like, they're like, wow, Scott actually is amazing at this and so now they see why i want to pursue this and i think the route i'm going to go in the long run as a career is a film editor i think that's where i would really land something good yeah. um, i've got some a couple leads of potentially editing hollywood movie trailers wow. and um yeah it just life is good that's an amazing story. I really love that. It's like you came out of it and now life is great for you. And um, I just really resonate with that. And everybody loves a happy ending. So mm-hmm. that's amazing. Um, and then I have one more question for you before we go into our speed round. Right. Um, if you could give one piece of advice to someone who is being diagnosed late, what would it be? Um, I think my advice would be, well, I think there's a couple pieces just, um, sometimes when you go in for diagnosis, you may not get the diagnosis you're hoping for the first time. It really depends on who you're getting tested by. And, um, 
when I first got diagnosed with being on the spectrum, I was diagnosed with PDD NOS, which is pervasive developmental disorder, not otherwise specified. And that was like, at the time there was PDD NOS, Asperger's, Asperger's yeah. Autism. I think that's and, what I was diagnosed with too. Yep. And then the reason they diagnosed me with that instead of Asperger's at the time was because they said, well, yeah, Scott has a hyper focus and a obsession with film, but he can he makes a living off of it. And it's just like, well, your obsession can be your living. It doesn't <laughs> wow, yeah. Or, your, or not even obsession, but like special interest. And it's just like, so then we went in and got tested years later, and it turned out I was autistic autistic when they changed the labels and everything right but um yeah it may take time to get the diagnosis and um just you'll you'll find your way and it may take time but um don't give up don't anything like that and it's just like also when getting diagnosed I was definitely down to some extent to know I was autistic, but also keep keep your mind open to the fact that like you can now get the supports you need through the state potentially. And um, there's just so many, yeah, it's hard to know you're autistic, but in, when you first find out, but also, yeah, just, opens up a lot of doors for supports and everything and you're able to look in the right places. All right, that's awesome. So thank you so much for telling us about yourself. And again, your film coming up is called Autism One Man's Journey, April 8th. That's tomorrow. And um, I'm going to leave links for to watch the film, the trailer, Scott's YouTube, his website, everything you can know about Scott in the description below. Now, are you ready for the speed round, Scott? Oh, I'm ready. Okay, put two minutes on the clock, but time means nothing. Here we go. Which is grosser, marshmallow peeps or orange-flavored chocolate? Orange-flavored chocolate. It's a snowy winter day. Which do you prefer, go out and play in the snow or stay in and watch movies drinking hot chocolate? Play in the snow, then watch movies with hot chocolate. <laughs> you see a snake. Run or investigate? Run. Have you ever shot a beautiful scene but forgotten to push record? I have. <laughs> what is your favorite cartoon from when you were a kid? Rocket Power. Nice. Fidget spinners, yay or nay? Yay. Have you ever ran into a bear? If so, what did you do? I've never ran into a threatening situation with a bear, but we've had bears in our backyard. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Guns and Roses or Aerosmith? Um, Aerosmith. Oh, man. Tofu, healthy and delicious or chewy water? Chewy water. You lose a bet and you have to eat a crayon. Which color do you choose? Which color do you eat? I don't know. I wouldn't eat any crayon. <laughs> but you lost a bet. You got to eat a crayon. All right. We're going to go purple. Spiders, eight-legged wonders or terrifying mini monsters? Terrifying mini monsters. I've been bitten by two brown recluse spiders. <laughs> yes. And then my last one, driving, fun and free or a multitasking nightmare? Fun and free. Woo! All right. You passed my speed round, Scott, with flying colors. You didn't get all flabbergasted, so congratulations. Thank um, you. Thanks so much for being on my show um, um, and for being my friend. Um, the oh, We have a, a lot of things coming up. We might be teaming up to make some films soon maybe then later i hope so yeah, i'm all vaccinated now so yeah and i'm about to get it too so um we'll see what happens and I, we'll have scott back on the show sometime because i think you're an awesome guest and thank you for being here awesome thank you for having me all right bye everybody